As the technology matures, awareness around directed energy weapons is growing. The US government is spending nearly one billion US dollars a year on directed energy projects. And Australia is making the technology a priority in the Advanced Strategic Accelerator Program. Sean O'Byrne joins us now to tell us more. Sean is Associate Professor at UNSW Sydney. Sean, welcome. Thank you so much for joining us today. Can you tell us a little bit about exactly what directed energy devices are? Directed energy devices are devices that send some form of either light or radio waves um, to a target in order to deposit usually heat um, onto that target to destroy it. Right. So, so the, the interest around the devices that we're seeing, and of course, as I mentioned in the introduction, that interest is really growing as the technology matures. Is this based on the fact that they can damage electronic systems which control other, other devices? That's right. So a lot of the computers that control things like drones or aircraft uh, are made up of very uh, small and very electrically sensitive componentry. So a pulse of high powered electromagnetic radiation can destroy the chips that control those devices. And that's one way in which directed energy can be made to uh, work. So if we're talking about security, that's obviously an example, um, an advantage rather. So can you take us through some of the other advantages of directed energy devices, including, of course, the fact that a laser beam essentially doesn't run out of ammunition? Right. So in the sorts of directed energy like lasers that deposit heat on objects, the light travels at the speed of light. And so that's much faster than any physical object moving. And that means that even the fastest things like a hypersonic missile, for example, is essentially stationary um, as far as that uh, device is concerned. Also, because it's projecting electromagnetic radiation or light, such devices don't need munitions. They don't need bullets. They, they basically need the energy to generate the light. Um, but as long as there's a readily available source of that energy, they can keep firing uh, for any length of time. So given the types of, of, of features that you've just been talking about, why isn't there a greater use of, of directed energy weapons? Well, I think because the difficulties of getting that energy onto the target and keeping it on the target for long enough to do thermal damage uh, poses quite a strong engineering problem. Uh, you have to, if you have an object that's a long way away and you have to focus uh, a laser beam on it, you know, anybody who's used a torch on something that's a long way away knows that it, any movement in your hand, for example, is going to make that light spot move around a lot. It's even more difficult if you're trying to do it over distances of kilometres. Also, uh, scattering of light, for example, by rain or by dust or anything like that can also have an effect on the device. And um, powering these devices while keeping them portable is also very, very challenging. So there's a number of technological problems that have to be overcome. I think one of the interesting things about directed energy devices is that we get closer and closer to being able to make useful devices, but nobody is quite at the point where they can say that, yes, this is a, a usable technology. Mm. So how close are we then to solving these kinds of problems, like the problem of power when, when using these devices? Small things can be immobilised even now, and I think that's, that's reasonable to say. So if you had a, a small drone or something like that, a microwave source or, or even a laser source could do sufficient damage to take something like out, that out. A larger device, uh, no, the powers aren't high enough yet. People have been saying for many years that we're nearly there, uh, but the challenges always prove to be just a little bit more than we're capable of. However, people are always making new lasers um, that are more efficient, uh, and that's particularly important because in generating that light, these devices also generate a lot of heat. 
and that heat can damage the device itself. So they're operating right on the edge of what's possible in terms of engineering. So I wouldn't like to predict that, you know, any time in the very short term, we'll have reliable uh, versions of these devices, but large scale devices have been built. Mm, so okay. they're very close to commissioning. Okay, so we are we are close. We're, we're even closer now than we, than we were a few years ago. Um, so, Sean, tell me, how easy do you believe that they will be to manufacture? What sort of infrastructure is going to be needed on that front? Well, the infrastructure used to develop these devices is based on laser diodes, and those are micro-scaled uh, electronic devices like the ones that we have in uh, laser pointers, for example, but much, much more powerful, obviously, than that. And so those technologies require the sort of nano fabrication technologies that are used to make silicon chips and, and other things. They're very advanced devices to make. Oh,